Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, can we rise on our feet as we open the service together? I read from Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 31, I read. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written? For your sake, we have been killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, no angels, no rulers, no things present, no things to come, no powers, no height, no depth, no, no anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Your name is higher above all the names. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. gathered here for what you did long time ago and you have brought us from darkness into
Yeah, we'll go back the same in the name of Jesus. We are pleading that Father, we will go back refueled. We will go back for fuel in the name of Jesus. We trust you this morning that Lord, you have taken over. You have taken charge in the name of Jesus. We pray for we know that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So we are asking, oh God, that anything that will militate around this vicinity that is not of you, we stand against it this morning in the name of Jesus. Our heart will be prepared to hear you in Jesus' name. Father, we trust you and we thank you for what you have come and have done in our lives. We're asking that you would take the glory this morning, even as we worship, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. Please have your seat. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter Sunday to all of us. This is a remarkable day, an important day in the Christian calendar. If there was no resurrection, there wouldn't have been hope for any one of us. So we appreciate God that we are here to witness the Easter Sunday 2024. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, the program, the order of service of the program is already in the bulletin and the media will help us to project the program so I don't have to be coming here uh, to tell us the proceedings. The only aspect I will say that the Bible reading will be done by Mrs. Susan Dowda, my wife. Then uh, the person that will take the prayer is also there. So just go straight. Don't wait for anybody to tell you to come in. The Lord will bless our service this morning in Jesus' name. Congregational song. Good morning, church. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Let's stand for our hymn.
Praise the Lord. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Can we be in a standing position for intercessory prayer? We are grateful, oh Lord, we are grateful, Lord, we are grateful, oh Lord, hallelujah, for all he has done for us in our family. bringing us to this gathering, that the purpose of our being here will not be in vain, that we will partake from the blessing of today, that we will leave this place with joy. So my taking of glory in heaven. Thank you for bringing us to the So pray and commit those that are still on their way coming that the Lord will hasten their footsteps to come and join us to partake in His blessing. this congregation in the hand of the Lord that he will send a revival into this congregation we should also commit the speaker into the hand of the Lord that the Lord will use him mightily Also commit the medical artery that is ahead of us, that the Lord will take control, that whoever that will match this ground will receive his blessing in Jesus' name, that nobody will come here and go back the same in Jesus' name. Also commit Mrs. Annie that she is not feeling fine. She is right now in the hospital. That God will send His words of healing to her. We should also commit those in the dean of the captives that the Lord will cause confusion in the camp of the captive and they will be released in Jesus' name. We should also pray and commit those that went for Easter that the Lord will bring them back safely to join us, Lord, in Jesus' name. My taking of Lord, my loving God that have traveled, Lord, that will join us, you will bring them back safely in Jesus' name. Lord, it's your name. Those that have lost their beloved one, that the Lord will comfort them. We 
should also pray and commit the fellowship groups into the hands of the Lord, that the Lord will use them and the Lord will bring a revival in our various fellowship groups in Jesus' name. Also bringing the zonal fellowships onto the hand of the Lord, that the Lord will continue to unite them. That the Lord will also give us His own love in this church. Today, that it, will all, that it will be meaningful to all of us that nobody will live here without his blessing. And we should also pray and commit ourselves unto the hand of the Lord where we have gone wrong, that the Lord will. Forgive us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And so, mighty King of glory in heaven, thank you for bringing us to your presence. King of glory in heaven, Lord that nobody will leave this place the same, Lord, in Jesus' name. That we will all experience your divine change, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, unite us the more. Mighty King of glory in heaven, those that are in the den of the captives, Lord, that you will release them, you will cause confusion in their camps, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty King of glory in heaven. For the sick ones, send your words of healings to them. For the Medical outreach coming up, King of glory in heaven, Lord, that you will send your ways of healing, that whoever that will come around this place, Lord, that you will not go back the same in Jesus' name. That every one of us will have a testimony to tell in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering us. Thank you for the ministration. Thank you for the person that will give us from your word. Lord, that you use him mightily, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Good morning, church, and happy Resurrection Sunday. I'm standing here on behalf of the Elders Board, the Finance Committee, and the Account Office, the Church Account Office, to present the 2024 New Year Thanksgiving report. From collection so far, we categorize our inflows into four. We have the cash, we have direct credit, that's payment into our bank account, then we have checks received, and then we have uh, foreign currencies. The event held on the 24th of March, 2024. It culminated on 24th of March, 2024, but we had given a day, I mean some days before then and some days after. So it came to a close yesterday night. 
Uh, however, uh, if there are pledges yet to be uh, redeemed, we are open to receive them and post them accordingly. For total cash received, uh, it sums up to 2 million. Eight hundred and sixty-three thousand two hundred and ninety two eight six three two nine zero for direct credits. That's payments directly into our bank account. We have nine million nine hundred and eighty-four thousand nine hundred and ninety naira nine nine eight four. 990. For, for check received, uh, 1.5 million naira, 1500000. For foreign currencies, we received uh, in values of US dollars, totaling 500 US dollar, 500 dollar bringing our total collection for the 2024 Harvest Thanksgiving to 14 million 348,280 Naira. Fourteen three four eight two eight zero point zero zero. Uh, if you note, the 2023 uh, report posted about 11.7 million. While 2024, uh, the Lord has helped us as a church to post 14.3 million. So you can see that in spite of the challenges, in spite of the challenges we have in the economy, God has helped us, or he's continuing to help us to hedge against the inflation. Uh, thank you all for your sacrificial givings, and we seek your continuous prayers for wisdom on how to effectively uh, utilize this uh, for missions, evangelism, uh, church welfare, and general administration, as well as the building project. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you very much, Financial Secretary. I think the Lord deserves more than what we have done. Thank you very much. He has set it with the subsidy, but we return all thanks to God. Thank you for what you have done. And we thank God for using you. And we'll continue to thank God to continue to use us for his own glory. The Bible says silver and gold belongs to the owner, belongs to God. So we thank God this morning for this report that we have heard. And I trust that the Lord will give us the wisdom to use these monies to the glory and honor of his name. Happy Easter Sunday to all of us in Jesus' name. Happy Sunday to all of us in Jesus' name. Let me see if we have guests worshiping with us for the first time to please indicate by standing where you are seated so that we welcome you. Are there guests? Please, maybe you came purposely to visit a friend, a relation. Thank you, we have one. Are there more? Okay, we have the second person there. Are there more? Okay. So we have, wow. So we have four in our midst. Okay, keep standing. I'll request the 
Choir to please stand. Please give us the welcoming uh, song or chorus as we extend a hand of love to these ones that are standing. Now, congregation, please, can we join the choir to sing and stand and extend hand of love to the one seated next to you? Tell him or her you're welcome to church this morning. Wish him or her a happy Easter Sunday. That's a good one. In Jesus' name. Yeah, thank you very much for doing that. Can you return back to your seat? To the glory of God. Thank you very much, choir. Can we jam our hands together to the glory of God on behalf of the choir? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And your number is encouraging today. You know, within the congregation, we have so many that travel, but you decided to stay behind uh, for this purpose. And I pray that God will bless you in Jesus' name. To the glory of God, we have one of us, Mr. and Mrs. Wasam Maza. The wife was put to bed, and the Lord blessed us with a gift of a baby within the week, or last week. So we thank God for that. That's a daughter to our uh, supervisor. So we pray that God will bless that family and also keep the baby for himself and for us. We have again uh, our brother, Elder, Elder Waguna. Where are you? Please, can you stand? Elder Waguna, where are you? Elder Waguna lost his sister uh, within the week. And the burial, hopefully, is going to be on the 4th of May. So let's continue to pray for him. Pray for the entire family that God will comfort them in a very special way. So you can call, you can visit. I believe it will go a long way to encourage him and the family. By the grace of God, uh, on Tuesday, we're beginning our medical outreach. Free medical outreach will begin, kickstart on Tuesday. We are trusting God that from Tuesday all through Friday, it's going to be a huge free, uh, free medical outreach. And just like I said, uh, many people will be trooping in here. For those of you that uh, you have not witnessed it before, you can come around and see what God is Oh, what God can do. So please, we are encouraged as members to please avail ourselves here for one thing or the other. We have so many departments and units that you key in, you help, and we believe it will go a long way. So please find time to be here, and I believe you will be blessed at the end of this medical outreach. Let me again on that ad by saying we would love to see people who donate water. You know, water is life. Water is life. 
uh, we thank God, previous years, we have enough water. In short, after the medical outreach, we have enough, you know, water left behind. So we are trusting that members will key in to donate uh, so that as our guests will be coming, they will have no cause to look for, for, for water around. Please, use clothes, clothes, new clothes, and whatever you think will be useful to another person. I think today and tomorrow will be the last day. So please endeavor to send those items uh, into the church here before the, the beginning of the medical outreach. Let me again doubt a member whom we have introduced by the grace of God. His wedding is going to be tomorrow at uh, Fadan Kagoma. Uh -huh, you see the youth are clapping. So one of them will be graduating out of you to join <laughs> another group. So we thank God and we pray for the success of the uh, trip, especially to those who will be going tomorrow and to come back the same day. Festus, Mrs. Festus, was admitted yesterday in Guarimpa General Hospital. You know, we announced uh, two or three Sundays ago that she lost her mother. Let's pray that God will heal her. I know it may be the shock of the home call of her mother. So she needs our prayer. And I employed every one of us to pray in our closets and you can visit to encourage and give them a call. Shata al Masiu also sent a letter of thanksgiving for a successful burial of uh, the father-in-law. So he's thanking the church for your support, for your encouragement, for your prayers. Let's continue to show that love to one another. And in conclusion, let me uh, mention that the church secretary is not with us today. He traveled to Inigo. I think he took off early hours of this morning for Inigo. Let's pray for many of our members that travel for the Easter celebration. And we look forward that God will return them maybe tomorrow, Easter Monday, or next tomorrow. So I request that we all stand this morning to pray together. Those of you worshiping with us for the first time, please uh, endeavor to wait after the service by the choir stand here by my left. And we have the medical team. Come on. The welfare team will be seeing you before you go. God in heaven, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are indeed grateful to be witnesses of this very unique Sunday in our lives, a Sunday that you resurrected and you gave us hope because you are the first fruit so we trust by faith that one day we also will be resurrected. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the guest whom you have brought to be part of us this morning. We receive them with thanksgiving, give them a hand of fellowship, and we trust that, Lord, you will minister to them, that you will speak to them, that you will reach out to them, that you will encourage them, that, Lord, you will bless them that our fellowship together here, they will go out with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for Elder Waguna and the entire family that are bereaved. Father in heaven, we commit them into your hands. We are believing that comfort can only come from you. So we pray that, Lord, you will reach out to them and comfort them. Thank you for Mrs. Annie. Uh, Festus, Father, we pray for her. She is right now on her sick bed in the hospital. We are believing you for healing. 
you have done it in the past, we are believing you will do the same today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gift of a new baby into this family that is called Equa Worship Center, Kaura. We bless your name. And we pray that God in heaven, you uphold, you will keep that child for yourself. And we pray that, Lord, you will strengthen the father and also the mother. We are indeed grateful even for uh, being witnesses of uh, this Easter. And we trust for your son, Dauda and Elizabeth, who will be joined together uh, tomorrow in Fad and Kagoma. God in heaven, that you prepare their hearts. God in heaven, we believe that you will do the act of joining by yourself in the name of Jesus Christ especially well-wishers who will be traveling to witness this occasion. We are asking in the name of Jesus that you protect each and every one. And we look forward that you will bring them back to us again in the name of Jesus. Surrender the medical outreach. This is your ministry. So, Lord, we are committing this event in your hands, and we are believing from the beginning to the very last day of this medical outreach. It shall be great. It shall be heart touching. Souls will come to your saving knowledge. And we are believing God in heaven that participants will go out of this place with testimonies. Please make supply available, even for your people that will be coming. Thank you. As we continue with this worship this morning, may your name be glorified. Thank you for answer prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. A Bible reading is taken from the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 8. Luke 24, 1 to 8. I read, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before, beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. May the Lord bless the reading of his word.
Healing Fellowship will give their special number. Then after that, band will come back. Sorry.
praise the Lord church are we happy to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord if you are happy can you jump up on your feet and shout hallelujah
Let us pray together. God in heaven, we believe your word. We believe you in totality. That Jesus who came, suffered and died a shameful death to give us life. We believe because you have resurrected. We believe because your tomb is empty. We believe that we will be with you with the Father and never to part again. God in heaven, increase our faith. This is another moment you are about to talk to us again, especially through your word. We ask that, Lord, you interpret your word to our understanding. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's be seated. Thank you very much, Brian. Because of preparing for today's message, and something dropped in my heart, that over 40 years, that my father and mother died. But over these 40 years, the grief of my mother and father are still sealed. I don't know whether you are understanding what I'm saying. And because of our culture and what is happening now, now people go back after some years to do a renovation, to do a, you know, uh, a little, you know, uh, tiling of the, of, of, the, of the grave. I sat down one day and I said, uh, is there a need for me to go and maybe repair the grave of my father? I see people do it. And in short, you go to Israel you see their burial ground, and you see how they take care of uh, graves. In short, some years back here in uh, Gudu Cemetery, it's not like what we're seeing today. You go there, you see how they dress and they make sure that the graves are looking very, very, very good. Now, even as the society is moving toward dressing, making sure that the graves looks very or look very good, my Bible this morning said, "The grief of my Savior is open." Instead of sealing it again, it's open. Now, last Sunday, or on Friday, pastor shared and discussed with us that it's for my sake. And it was the account of the pen from the triumphant entry on, on, on Sunday and all through the week to Friday that our Savior went through different kinds of pain and sorrow and suffering. In short, he gave us a picture of different classes with, with a very unique, you know, accusation against our Savior. But he reminded us on Friday, it was. He went through it for your sake and for my sake. And this morning, by the grace of God, we have talked on the risen Lord, he has resurrected. But this morning, the grave of my Savior is empty. So the empty tomb, believe the empty tomb first before you believe that his body is not there. 
So this morning we'll reflect on the empty tomb of our Savior. And on that basis, let me read something here. They say all world religions are bordered by the empty tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ. All religion in the world, they are bordered why the grave, the tomb of our Savior is empty. Because number one, they said if you go to China, you will find out that the, that the tomb of Buddha, the inscription written there is that occupy. Now, the second one again is that if you go to the Middle East, you will find that the tomb of Muhammad, the inscription written there is occupy over the door. Now, if you go to Russia, in Russia, you will find the body of Lenin or Lenin in his glass coffin. And the inscription written there is occupy, quote and unquote, occupy. But from that right up, it says, now if you go to Israel, where you have the tomb of our Savior and Lord. Carve on a rock and we are told that the inscription is not occupy, but the inscription is vacant. Now, on that basis, let us reflect on Luke chapter 24. The empty tomb. My Bible in verse 1 of Luke chapter 24, the Bible says very early on Sunday morning, and this is the Sunday morning, very early on Sunday morning, the woman went to the tomb of our Savior. And the Bible in that verse 1 says, they went with spices. And that is just like in the hospital, you have what will preserve the body of a dead man or a dead woman. Because they believe that the spices will help to preserve the body of our Savior. And they went with it. Only to discover in a distance the soul that the stone has been rolled away. That is enough for them to return back home and say, wow, we have seen what we never, never, never thought. But because of their dedication, because of their love for the Lord, they went an extra mile. Though in a distance they saw the stone roll away, but my Bible in verse 2 said they went and they went in. That is what verse 2. And as they went in, my Bible says they did not find the body of our Savior. Very possible that we are wondering what happened. 
It's possible they might have forgotten the teaching of Jesus that said, I will go through all kinds of suffering and I will be handed over to evil men and they will torture and kill me. But I will rise on the third day, probably. They wouldn't have asked, ah, where is the body of our Savior? It is said what, whatever that is confirmed, any matter, anything that happened and you have confirmation from the mouth of one, two, and three, then the matter is established. Probably at this point, they were still contemplating and asking question, how many that the stone was rolled away? Most of we have come in, but where is his body? And my Bible says right up there before them is what we call angelic beings. Two men. Other translations said angelic beings appeared from nowhere to really confirm to them what happened. And behold, this man asked them, asked this woman, what are you looking for? And they said, we are looking for the body of our Savior. If I'm to go an extra mile, I said, we have come with our spices to make sure that we do what is called embalming in the body, on the body of our Savior. And the angelic being responded, why are you looking for the living in the midst of the dead? God, that's a powerful statement, isn't it? Beloved, we may be seated here now. There are living beings here that tomorrow they will have a testimony like our Savior. The world may be looking. Evil men may be looking. They will never see you. Let me hear amen. Why are you looking for the living in the midst of the dead? Wow. Now I said, truly, it was confirmed at this point that Jesus is no more there that Jesus has gone, that Jesus has resurrected. It was confirmed in the account of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 20, 28. And from the account of Mark also, Mark captured it again in Mark chapter 16. And no wonder Luke concur in the book of Luke chapter 24. And you look at John chapter 20, you will see also John agreed and said, yes, at this point, the man is not a man. Jesus is not a man. Jesus is a sent messenger of God. He has accomplished what, G what God sent him to do. He gave his life that as many that will believe in him will have life and have it in full. Empty tomb, my brother. My sister, empty tomb. Do you believe that the tomb of our Savior is empty even right now that you and I are seated here? If you believe it, then for sure you believe that he has resurrected. Empty tomb. 
the woman went as evangelists to let the disciples know that the man is not there. The tomb is empty. And from the disciples to all, the message is one. That Jesus is no more there. He has gone. This is what we saw from the account of Luke, or the account found in Luke chapter 24. But if you look at verse 2 and 3, the Bible says that last stone at the entrance of the tomb has been removed. I don't know how heavy it is. I don't know how big it is. But beloved, go to Russia, go to China, go to all these countries. In short, come back to our country here. All those great shots who have gone before us and just move closer. Go back to your family compound. All the tombs of your fathers, mothers, and brothers and sisters still sealed. If it's true, then all over all the graves in the world today are sealed. Still sealed. Will continue to be sealed. Only the grave, the tomb of my Savior that is open. Just like I said, the woman asked at this point, ah, where's the body of our Savior? And said, probably they have forgotten the teaching that Christ taught them. And it's possible many of us today forget the teachings we are receiving, the lessons we are drawing from one another, in short, even from mad people, whether good or those who are not good, still God allowed us to pick lessons from those things and from those people. So that it will stick in our heart. He has said it. As many that believe in him, they will not die. They will live again. Do you believe you will live again? Do you believe that? That also can be traced on the importance and significance of a very unique day like this. A very unique season like this. If truly this tomb is empty, according to the word of the Lord, then we know for sure that the spiritual significance of the empty tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ, the spiritual significance of it, the importance of it to those of us who are in Christ is that that empty tomb revealed the victory of good over evil. Now, reveal the victory of good over evil. What we saw, what we heard on Sunday from our pastor is evil in control. Because we saw all the plot against our Savior. But you see, Christ Jesus is good. And that plot and that evil against him could not succeed. So the spiritual significance of the empty tomb is to let you and I as children 
of God Almighty to know that always that will reveal the victory of good over evil. Beloved, bring it to our own context today. What is happening? Kidnapping here and there. All evil here and there. All those evil are against good. But the assurance this morning from this Easter Sunday is that good will always triumph over evil. No wonder the third on Friday the man has been defeated. Friday evening, every wicked person during that time believed that that man, that prophet, that whatever has been crushed. That's the end. Not knowing there is what is called Saturday. Saturday is called a silent Saturday. But yet, silent, but Jesus was still speaking on Saturday. And we call it 400 silent years. Yes, but Jesus was still speaking. Only to discover very early, but very early on Sunday morning, the woman came to the, to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone covering the entrance had been rolled away, rolled aside. Little did they know that Sunday morning like this, our Savior will what? Finally, he will rise up. He will ascend into heaven early of tomorrow. Empty tomb, if we are to trace the importance of it as seen from this text again, you discover that the spiritual significance, the importance of the empty tomb for you and for me is to also let you know that God always vindicates the righteous. God always vindicates the righteous. Jesus came as a righteous servant of God but went through all that pastor shared with us on Friday, but God in heaven who sent him has promised him from day one, I will never leave you alone. I am with you. Don't forget. Your responsibility is to live righteous life. Your responsibility is to believe me. Your responsibility is to make sure that you do what I command you to do. But I will always vindicate the righteous. In short, it was on this second point basis that the woman went into the grave and could not see him. Because the promise of the Father is yea and amen. They could not find him. They couldn't find him. Listen. Every righteous child of God here on this side of eternity, you are not alone. I thought I would hear amen. amen. You are not alone. The vision is yet for an appointed time. Yes, as we go through it, not here in Nigeria, all over the world. The world is ganging against good. But it's only but for a time. Beloved, I want to encourage you this morning. That even as we live in a wicked world, because the Bible says we are in the world, but we are not for them. We live with them, 
but we are not for the world. And so, if you know your stand in Christ, be rest assured that the day you exit here, you will live with Christ Jesus in heaven. Don't forget, empty tomb signifies he is no more there. He has gone. Just as he said, and it has come to pass. So the hope and the joy of believers is that he is the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 20 and 22. Because our Savior Jesus is not right there in the tomb or his tomb is not sealed up to this moment, he is our first fruit because he has resurrected you and I believe the word of God that one day we will not be here. Who will go? Who will go? So the empty tomb means that those who will believe in him, one day their own tombs with what will be open, will be vacant. Not occupied, but will be vacant. That empty tomb also means he is the first son of my father. He is the first daughter of my father. Because that first daughter has conquered and, and gone finally. Do you remember when he was to go? He called his disciples to himself and said, ha, Now, let not your heart be what? Trouble. You believe in me. Believe in my father, also believe in me. I am going to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again. He's not going to stay with the father because he left all those followers of the first fruit behind. So for sure he's coming back to take with him all those who will later believe in him as the first fruit. So that where he is, there, those others will be forever. That empty tomb, or a tomb also means he is not there according to verse 3 and 4 that we read. You know, they asked, ah, we came for this. These angelic beings said, he is not there. We want to assure you women. And if you read verse 10, that is where you see the names of those women. But he's not there. He has resurrected. Let not your heart be troubled. And verse 6 assures us again from the text that that empty tomb also means that he has gone. Because the angelic being confirms to them that see, he has risen. He is not here. He has gone. May the Lord help us to believe him. But do you know what is taking away uh, 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 attention, taking our attention from him? It's all that we see where we are living. What takes the attention of believers from him is those things that we see with our eyes, those things that our hands touch. Take our attention from him. But don't forget the Bible says, all those things that our eyes and our hands can see and touch, they are temporal. 
But what is unseen is eternal. Soul of a man who believes cannot be seen, but because he or she believes, he or she will live eternally. It is my prayer that one day all of us will be with him. So let me conclude by saying that all other tombs are occupied. But only the grave, the tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ that is vacant. Let me say hallelujah. That's the truth. We have a father that we rely on. We have a father that we lean on. We have a father that we will trust. We have a father that will follow his footsteps. We have a father that his arms are wide open. We have a father who promised us a better place more than here. You know, some years back, I flown from Lagos to, what do they call this? Uh, Doha. Doha International Airport. We are to land there in the night. You know, when the plane was descending, descending, descending to a point where you view the whole city. I watched that city in the night. Very bright. I say, wow. Wow. The Bible says that one is just like a drop of water in a sea. Beauty of heaven. Only spiritual eyes can see. Beloved, if the world is to woo us, always remember who you are in Christ Jesus. If the world is to take away your attention, always remember that you have a father who is your mentor, who is your mother. We don't go by the dictates of the world. We go by the dictates of the world. And also by the dictate and command of the father. He is assuring you seated here this morning that he will come back. His grave is empty. Your own tomorrow will be empty. I will live with him. No sorrow, no pain. Pastor Williams will never cry again. You will never go through that cancer that is disturbing you. You will never go through that very terrible and horrible husband who will take knife and said, I will choke you. Wow, you will have a very better husband. You will never go through those people who will say, either you give us, in short, I was told that they kidnapped one, one man, they demanded 300 million, and 100 million was paid. But up to today, the man is still under captivity. Beloved, a day is coming. You will sit, you will, you will dine with someone who will look to your face and say, this enjoyment is going to be everlasting. You will never shed tears again. May the Lord help us under the grace, the cover, the presence of God Almighty to live like him do here so that tomorrow we will be with him and never to say bye-bye again. Let us pray. Do you want to say something to the Lord this morning? His grave is em empty. 
And that if you believe he is not there, he is not in the grave, on a very good day like this, then for sure you believe that he is able to give life. So, do you want to identify with him? Do you want to say, today, Lord, on this Easter Sunday, my hand up, and I will say a word of prayer with you, so that you have assurance of your salvation. Just your hand up, so that you will live with him forever. Please, if there is anyone that you want to be sure of your salvation, just raise your hand, and I will say a word of prayer with you. Is there anyone? Say to the devil, I will stand, I will raise my hand because this is the only opportunity I have. Is there anyone? Just your hand, let me pray and then go back to my seat. Is there anyone? Want to be sure of your salvation? Please, your hand, let me say a word of prayer with you. Okay, it seems we don't have anyone. I trust that God will help us to hold on to the assurance of our salvation and it shall be well with us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you have spoken to us. Thank you, Lord, because you have reminded us again of who you are to us. We are grateful that you are no more in the grave. You have resurrected. You are right seated at the right-hand side of the Father. We pray, God, in heaven that all of us will be partakers of that glorious assembly one day in the name of Jesus. Grant us this grace, O oh Lord, to live for you. And especially this season, help us, Lord, to as many that will come our way that will brighten the corner, that will talk, that will share that good news that Jesus has resurrected. Thank you for hearing us and thank you for answering. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you.
Thank you very much, choir, for that number. Uh, I have a lost but found key here. Please, if it is your own, endeavor to stay behind and pick it with uh, Johanna. Johanna, please. Aha, Johanna is there. You can get it from Johanna if it is your own. Then, guest brigade, please wait after the closing prayer. Guest brigade. And finally, let me also remind us Understand that the last day for the collection tomorrow in the evening but if you still have some items to bring in on the first day go ahead and do that but I think by tomorrow we should know what and what we have so that we know how to share so please if you have something make sure that you bring don't forget water 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 thank you very much you can get it from our members who have a, a bottle water company, pure water, and the rest. Thank you. So. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you in Jesus' name. God in heaven, we thank you for bringing us to the end of this worship service today. Revelation seal the whole of the blessings of this service today. And Lord, we receive with thanksgiving, believing that your grace is enough and also sufficient for every one of us to live above sin. Even as we continue with the Holy Communion, the Lord, you also take the leadership. Well, for those going, I pray that your peace will go with them. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Elders, please, can you come and take your seat? Seven elders, if we have more from the former. Okay, as you sit, please give one uh, line in between so that those who will serve will walk freely. Okay, go. Okay. In 152. In 152. Oh,
Thank you. That's a very good one, uh, Mrs. Jirai. Uh, seven elders, please can you come? Yet, can, can I have uh, more three people? Serving elders? Serving or non serving? Thank you. Three, three, thank you. Let us pray. Father, once again, we thank you for this privilege and the opportunity to participate by taking, drinking, and eating thy body. We pray, Lord, that I will not partake on this in condemnation, but by Father, you will partake in blessings, purification, healing, perfection to the glory of your name. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You go in truth, the bread and the wine. Well, we have. Do we still have? Yes. Okay, fine. Him 118. Him 118.
Joachim 8, 9, 4. I hope we have the bread and also the wine with the media upstairs or the gallery. Okay, okay, fine. Sorry.
Anybody left out again? We have to, oh, okay, one. Okay, one.
Thank you very much. I stand here. with the heat I was sweating and I can see from my wife down to other people they wish this sweat would have been wiped away cleaned away but Jesus loved came out like this word. No wonder the mother cried and cried and cried. To her, how can my son go through all this? And I believe my wife is saying in her heart, how can my husband sweating and sweating and sweating like this? And I guess all of us. Beloved, that was exactly what Christ went through. Today, I want to assure you, if you have Christ in your heart, you will live with him tomorrow. And you will live forever with him in Jesus' name. As they sat down to eat, he took a small loaf of bread and asked God's blessing on it. Broke it, then gave it to his disciples. Take this one, two minutes and thank the Lord that you are alive today. Thank God because Christ came and has finished his assignment by opening the door for you and for me so that we may have life. Is there any burning issue in your heart? Is there any challenge in your heart? Is there any unconfessed sin in your heart? He said, come unto me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let us confess and ask God that even as we partake in taking the bread as a symbol of his body, the wine as a symbol of his blood. that God will purify us from all unrighteousness. Promise him that, Lord, as you have made it possible for me to partake with you in the suffering, death, and resurrection, Lord, please go with me, and I'm ever ready to go with you to whatever land. Before us, Lord, are these elements, the bread and the wine. We ask of your blessing upon it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray and I declare, Lord, even as we take it, that it will remind us of your death and resurrection. It will remind us again of the great commission, the last assignment you left behind for all believers, so that with your grace we can accomplish it. I therefore dedicate this element in your hands this morning for use in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Who we'll eat the bread and also follow with the wine.
Having done that, I will ask the elders, please, can you come? Who we'll sing a hymn and collect offering. This offering mainly is for this element. We are grateful because there are members of the church who have been helping in buying the bread or the, the wine. We pray that God will bless you in Jesus' name. done with the collection? Okay. Uh, I would like to invite the leadership of the Women Fellowship. As we all know, hopefully on Wednesday they will be leaving for Kaguro, the international conference of all Women Fellowship leaders in Equa. So I want to invite the leadership to please, all those that are going, please can you come out here. So by the grace of God, we'll be having these ones who will be leaving for Kagoro on Wednesday to join